Today is just a pledge and a brief reminder to not forget the great powers of the terminal. Gary Bernard has this great video from a long while back called the Unix Chainsaw. Now just for context, Gary Bernard is the guy who ran the old screencast series called Destroy All Software and who has now resurrected the series Destroy All Software and is making screencasts again. I haven't watched the newer screencasts, but I avidly watched the old screencast series and I can honestly say that that's likely one of the most single important resources I've had in my software development career as a person who is practicing and learning programming. I have probably not learned as much from anything in comparison to the Destroy All Software screencast. So sincere kudos to you, Gary Bernard. Thanks for that. But in the talk, the Unix Chainsaw, Gary emphasizes, and by the way, I highly recommend that you check out that talk. It's in the description. But in that talk, he emphasizes the flexibility of, of Bash. So the extent to which you can solve problems using Bash in ways you probably wouldn't spontaneously imagine otherwise. So oftentimes you would think, okay, maybe now I need a programming language to solve this problem. But actually you could just make use of Bash and quickly hack something up and solve the problem immediately. Now in this video, he shares this quote, which I think is absolutely hilarious. And the quote is that it's okay to do something half-assed if it's the right half of the ass. Uh, I interpret it this way, so that it's okay to sort of quotation marks wing it. It's okay to do something sloppily if you deliberately do it sloppily. It's not okay if you just sloppily do it sloppily. It's not okay to just ignore doing things properly. But when you deliberately ignore to make things properly, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different story. Because then you know where you are being sloppy and where you're being super meticulous and super organized. So sloppy is good if you have control of it. And that's totally oxymoron-ish, of course, because if, if you have control over your sloppiness, it's probably not sloppiness. But I guess that's why it's the right half of the ass. I think you can see what I'm saying. But back to the terminal. I mean, what are some things that you can actually solve using the terminal where you spontaneously otherwise may have been intending to use a programming language? Well, build scripts, for example. Making different programs work with each other. And so forth and so forth and so forth. Let me give you a concrete example from yesterday. So I'm a PhD student and currently I'm taking a course in network science. So yesterday I was trying to generate a number of plots using R that represent networks. And the graphs that I was trying to plot did not stem from empirically collected data, but I wanted to generate them. So they are random graphs essentially. But given that I'm not so familiar with R, I didn't want to spend my time trying to learn R because I was short on time and I had to get this done. So instead I figured I would use Ruby, which I, I perfectly know, and then writing the actual generation of the graphs was super trivial and took me essentially no time. So then it's a question of making R interoperate with Ruby, or vice versa, depending on how you look at it. So I did a few Googles and I re realized that there are, of course, ways of, of making them work together. You can run an R server and then connect to that R server from Ruby, or you can invoke R commands, as in boot up an R, R server, I guess, from Ruby, etc., etc. I mean, there are these different ways. The point was that that even if they are trivial, they are not as trivial as not having to worry about that. So instead, what I realized is that R can take input, can read input from standard in, and R can read command line arguments. So suddenly then, the problem is trivial. So when I write these Ruby scripts that generate graphs, instead of these Ruby scripts outputting to file, I just print strings from the Ruby file in the format of a CSV file. And when I invoke this Ruby file, I invoke it from, from the terminal and pipe the output of that Ruby script into an R script file. So I pipe the output from my Ruby script into the R script containing my plotting code. And if I want to change things about how the, how the graph is plotted, then I just give command line arguments to my R script. Super trivial. And I think the most important point here is that we've deferred so many decisions. Say that I would realize that actually this was very useful to me and I want to keep on generating these graphs and I want more flexibility over time. Then I haven't built myself into any dangerous corner where I have to spend a lot of time restructuring things. Think about how I haven't made decisions in terms of folder structures or object orientation or what classes to have and what signatures my methods should have, etc, etc, etc. Essentially the only decisions I've made is that we're using R and we're using Ruby 
and that all of the Ruby scripts constructing graphs will return CSV formatted output. Now this is of course also some decisions and uh, you could argue that these decisions will cause me pain later on because if I decide to move to some kind of say object oriented structure I may want to encapsulate all of my scripts into classes rather than having them plainly print CSV formatted output. But my argument is that that's unnecessary overcomplication. Essentially, I'm saying it's likely that this app will remain small. And it's likely that I can keep piping things back and forth using Bash, uh, using the terminal as the sort of uh, main orchestrator, as the thing that composes things together, as the thing that composes programs, inputs and outputs together. And thus, there isn't even any need for me to ever move into a class-based structure. So with that reasoning, I've made very, very few decisions. And I would say the most important decision decision being that I've decided that the graph generating Ruby files directly print CSV formatted data to standard out. So if you're not super familiar with Bash, you might say that, well, this actually sounds kind of painful because then you have to, every time you want to invoke a piece of the program, you have to run a Bash script that pipes one thing into another thing and like you have to make sure you type everything correct and get all the arguments correct and all that. Well, that's the point, right? You don't have to. Because it's Bash, it's just trivial to write a Bash script. So you write a bash script that invokes all of your graph generating algorithms, passes them one by one to the plot generating R script with the correct arguments, and then let R write the output to file. Now in a perfect world, R script would support writing image files to standard out, because then we wouldn't even have to specify a file name in an R script. We could just pipe the contents of the image file, the plot that I want to, to create, to standard out, and then use bash again to pipe that into a specific file. That would be even more flexible. But unfortunately, R script doesn't support this, at least not trivially. And that's the sort of pain point where I felt that, okay, trying to solve that problem will take way more more time than it's worth compared to how much I will gain from, from solving that problem. But apart from that, doing this whole bash solution, I would definitely argue is the right half of the ass. I'm saying that this is kind of a trivial problem. It's kind of a one-off. The, the, the program may live for a long while, but it's highly unlikely that it will turn into any, say, user-facing program, any program that will have, have to be given to somebody else. So I'll just do it half-assed, but I'll make sure that I'll spend minimum amount of time on it and that I choose the right half of the ass, that I don't make things half-assed that may come back and bite me later on. So that's it. I hope it was interesting to get a sort of in-depth image of how my thinking went when solving a day-to-day -day problem. Just as a final point, I think this has tons to do with Robert C. Martin's statement that good architecture is to maximize the number of decisions not made. While doing things half-assed with the right half of the ass, we are attempting to maximize the number of decisions not made. We are attempting to defer decisions that don't matter right now so that we can make them later when we have more information and know which decisions are likely more dangerous and which decisions are not. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe for more talks on code, and I'll see you in the next one.